What's up everybody doing a market recap video for today March the 25th as this March mess continues I'm gonna be very honest with you today. I'm gonna to share a reflection with you I got extremely frustrated today, which I haven't gotten that frustrated in a very long time Because it happened two days in a row to me where I had the right trade but my execution missed and I'm gonna share how and why my execution missed and they were both uh, profitable, but they're both too small. The opportunity was a big trade. And that's where the frustration comes in. And the reason for this, and if it's happened to you or it's currently happening to you, the reason for that is because we are in protective mode. We are in protect the higher loan mode. Had I been in blue skies, had I been in breakout, I would just, okay, I'd just go right back in and get back in, in aggressive but I'm looking for these opportunities to present themselves. Opportunity where the ranges open up and there's a good trade, even if it's just going to be a day trade, the range is big. That's what I wanna see. And we had, we had the ranges big on these two moves that I'm gonna talk about. And I talked about it this morning on our morning live about SPX 385. And that's what gets me even more is that I was so focused on two plays that I forgot to look at SPX at that moment when I needed to look at SPX. And then as it was happening, I went back to my SPX chart and you know, I have two big monitors, right? But I do all my main charting on my main screen. So I don't have those drawings and everything lined up on that zone. I'll be aware of those levels, but, and this is no excuse, zero. I messed it up. I'm in a thread and I'm focusing on the entire setup that we're looking at and that we're participating in. And then it kind of just lost sight of what SPX was doing, watch, watching the Russell and watching NASDAQ. And then SPX, you know, I see what they're doing, but I kind of just for a second forgot about 385. And then it's later on, I think we're at about 387, 388. I look and I'm like, I bring it up. I'm like, oh, 385. There's tweezer bottoms at 385. And now we're going and it's choppy. So let, let's talk about that psychology. The protecting the higher low gets you in protective mindset, which means you only want to find A plus setups. But when you go and look for the A plus setup, which is what I've been doing, is you want the good entry. You want the good risk to reward. So I'm going to make an entry in here, but if this is wrong, also, I'm an, I'm an influencer, right? But if this is wrong, at least I got that good risk to reward. So, you know, if I get a stop deal, a small loss, that's okay. You know, we'll find, we'll find a better entry. Uh, but if it's right and it, it goes, like you're feeling really good, you got it, I've influenced, I've got some people into the trade as well. But if it's going right and then it's a fake out, oh no, I'm protecting my higher low. I know a lot of people are protecting their higher low and now we get trapped in a position It's like, whoa, so we take it off, right? We take off that small profit because we see that little red flag that pops up. The only way to say, hey, you know, I should have stayed, and I'm gonna talk about the two trades, I should have just stayed with the Russell short yesterday on the bear flag, or I should have just stayed with the Russell bounce today on the uh, lower trend line, which we talked about this morning. Everything happened that we talked about was gonna happen. The only way to do that is if your position sizing is appropriate. If anybody knows me, I like to play with a little bit of size. So when I go with the trade, my position sizing for this trade, I'm not trying to make a day trade. I'm not trying to make a small trade. I'm trying to hit a trade that I've been waiting for, for seemingly weeks, a, a great, great opportunity. So when I go for it, my sizing is telling me right then and there, if you're wrong, my plank is a little bit off the ground. You talk about how high you raise your plank off the ground. Um, with no support. So you have a plank. Anybody who's never heard me talk about this before, you have a plank, it's five feet off the ground, you've got no supports. What happens if you fall? You don't care. You're going to just land on your feet. You're not going to get hurt. If you trade like that, then the trade means nothing to you. If, you. if you're making that trade and it means nothing to you, then why are you taking the trade? Don't waste your time. Now you raise that plank, you know, 10 feet off the ground, you know, that's okay. I mean, that's fine. Now, when you raise it 20 feet off the ground, if you fall, hey, you might sprain an ankle here. You might get a little bit hurt, but that, that's okay, right? You might be like, hey, yeah, you know, we're trading. We've got to put on some risk. If I fall 20 feet, I think I can handle that. 
Now we raise that plank 30, 40, 50 feet off the ground. Ooh, you start to get a little bit nervous. Now when you really raise that plank high off the ground and you got to stand up when you're in the trade and you're watching every two minute candle and you're watching the volume and you're very, you can't make a mistake. So when you feel you can't make a mistake, you're going to be trigger happy, right? You're going to be like, okay, boom, no, I got to get out because that moment is not right. Uh, you get hurt, right? That plank's too far, too far off the ground. But when you're coming in and you're trying to smash a bear flag and you're trying to smash an oversold bounce, I'm not trying to go small. I want to hit this trade. I've been waiting a month to get out of this higher low situation and get the breakout. So that mindset affected these two trades. And both trades are from the Russell. So yesterday, yesterday I was looking at this trade. Uh, yeah, this candle stick in here. I was thinking bear flag. We're gonna bear flag, we're gonna drop down, and I think we have opportunity to come down into this zone. That's what I'm looking for, there's the opportunity. So let's draw the bear flag for those new that don't uh, understand bear flags or you know, just illustrate it. And if you're new to the channel or you've been here a long time, don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video. So we have this bear flag set up yesterday and let's go in and check out those candles. Now, one of the things that I've really noticed in here, bigger picture guys, right? We are in a choppy environment. This is a swing trader's nightmare right now. You swing one day, bullish, boom, it's bearish the next day. You swing one day, bearish, boom, it's bullish the next day. This is a true scalper uh, environment, right? Later on, you might look back at it and say, man, it should have just been loading long or it should have just been loading short. We're going to have to see what comes out of this. And that's not the kind of trader I am. I'm waiting to see where the real momentum is. But um, right now, from a long term, a long traders, a swing traders perspective, this is a terrible, this is a nightmare, right? Because you can't get market direction. And if you're a swing trader based off of momentum, the momentum is always getting stalled. So let's not lose sight of the fact that every day we're coming in and we're looking at these key levels, but we're not sure which algos are going to turn on. The algos that I typically focus on, which is what I always talk about and teach you guys, the five minute ADMA, two minute ADMA, the, and then we, we go down, right? Five, 15, 30 hourly. We watch those ADMAs, how the algos are trading off of them. In the past couple of days, in the past few sessions, the algos have really switched their buying and selling behavior, which is telling me we're getting into an inflection point in the chart where because they're flipping so much and there's a lack of consistency, they push us up, they push us down, they push us back up, they push us back down versus what we were seeing before was, hey, if it's a bull day, here's the algo. That's it, just ride the algo, just enjoy, walk up your stop, five minute higher low, very easy. Today, yesterday, the past few sessions, you try and do that, you're just getting stopped out, right? It won't work. So that tells me because the algos are constantly battling bull and bear, we're getting to an inflection point in the chart, which tells me, the week that I thought we would get market direction, which is this week, I still think we're gonna get it because we're seeing this big battle happening, tomorrow being the last day of the week, we should go for it, we should see what happens. Now, it might happen next week because quarterly rebalancing. It might just be that, it might just go into next week and then we're not gonna get clear market direction until, until the first week of April. We'll have to deal with that, right? We're not gonna like it. But the algo behavior has been very off. And let's go look at this yesterday. So this is the, yeah, here we go. So here's my thought process yesterday that we were coming into a bear flag scenario and we were looking at that on the four hour chart, right? We're looking at in here. Let's go back to where we are. We're, we're dumping and now we're bouncing. And we started bouncing in the futures market overnight and now the bell rings and here's the bell four hour candlestick at nine. So this is what I did yesterday, which, we called out and unfortunately I you know I would love to have everybody to have hit it but we had to take it off pretty quick so let's look at this in here so here we are we are bouncing in the futures market here we are at bounce started roughly after hours no just before the bell then we came back after hours then we started to get a little bit of escalation in here to the bell ring here's the candlestick in here 945 my interpretation is bear flag, we're gonna go down, we're gonna go hit that lower trend line. That's the idea. So I get the spinning top candlestick, essentially a shooting star, and then the big bear candle in here. So I'm looking for a nice algo rhythm now. So I get into the trade. 
I get into the trade and the first reaction is a good reaction. It's exactly what I want to see. It's the reaction we are looking for. In the bear flag for this to happen, that's the candlestick we want. We get the reversal. Everyone thinks, here we go. We're going up. No. Boom. Reversal candlestick. They shoot it down. This candlestick in here, I stopped out with profits. I think it was like 35 cents right there on that candlestick. I stopped out. Um, in that candlestick in here, the reason why I stopped out was because of a signal I saw on SPX and it was the volume I saw on SPX. So immediately we saw a big upper wick and we closed under the five minute ADMA inside bar broke up again, big upper wick. I had an opportunity to think about getting into the entry here again. And in this candlestick, I sat there and I was a little bit disappointed because I was like, oh, they are going to break it down here. And now I'm going to have to go find. Uh, I was disappointed because I got stopped out and I would have been a little bit healthier into the profits. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I got to get in in a lower high. I got to get back into a lower high and then because I don't want to buy in here and then they shoot me straight back up, right? I don't want to do that. So what happens is we come up, we don't break to a new low. It's an inside bar, right? We come up and we break the five minute ADMA. Instead of seeing a nice algorithm sell like we saw in here, they brought it back up. And instead, they made a new high a day. We haven't been seeing this type of behavior. Down, lower high, new low a day, straight V-shape to a new high, back down. So once this happened in here, this, I stopped being bearish. I stopped, didn't go bullish. I just said, you know, this is, I got to see what's going to happen here because I'm confused. And then, you know, you're doing your work, you're looking at other things, you're scouting other charts, you're going through other charts, you're looking at other names, um, thread requests, questions, all that stuff, getting ready to go live, all those things, looking at what else is happening in the market. And then we started to fade, right? We started to fade. So now you could be thinking, oh, you know, if we start seeing an algo sell in here, that, you know, we could go. We don't break the new low day, we double bottom. That's the entry signal right in there. But at this point, I'm not watching it. At this point, I'm not on top of it. At this point, it's not my major focus. And that's the drawback for what I'm doing and also having too much information and looking at so many things is that if you're not zoned in on a particular chart and a particular uh, play that you're trying to do and you're just trying to catch it in the early morning, because generally we're going to get that early direction, what time did that happen? Right? It happened at lunchtime. That's it for me. This is not the time, right? This is, I'm on lunch and we're getting ready to go live at about one o'clock. So that was your signal in there, but you would have had to been trading during lunchtime, which is not something I do. I generally don't take on positions between 11 and two. So then I go live, right? I go live. It was one o'clock. I went live. And while I'm live, I'm watching this do exactly what I was originally looking for to happen earlier in the day. So frustration is kicking in because it's like, man, I've been waiting for a great opportunity like this for a little while here. And now I've missed it. So now my mindset is this got to go for the bounce. So what happened was uh, we went live and our first indication was once I finished live, we was going to look for the bounce. What we needed to see was a climax. So this was the first candlestick when I thought, okay, let's get ready to look for the bounce, but we didn't see a climax candlestick. So I don't want to play that. I don't want to play this until I see a climax to the downside. Generally, you're going to see the climax happening. And plus, the market algos are in sync. We're watching the SPX fall. We're watching the NASDAQ fall. And we're watching the Russell fall all at the same time. So I'm looking for a climax candle. We didn't see it. Small bounce. Reject a five-minute ADMA. Strong algo, algo sell. Here we are. This candlestick. Potentially, here we're going to go. I mean, the volume got pretty interesting on the bull side. This candlestick, maybe this candlestick is going to be the, considered the climax candlestick. Boom, another rejection of the five minute and me. And that's it. I'm not swinging this. You could swing it, right? You could say, well, we're going to return to the mean. Like the most likely scenario is we're going to return to the mean because that's why I was interested in playing the balance coming into today is because we were looking at that eight hour ADMA where we were trading today plus the four hour ADMA was going to get a mean reversion trade. We were going to get back up into that zone. So if you came into the day swinging from yesterday um, and looking for that move, you started off in a pretty bad position. I didn't. Started off in a pretty good position. Cash and ready. I was actually very excited this morning. So the idea was um, to try and catch the bounce. And we had a couple of zones to be looking for. 
We had the Russ off of that lower trend line. Absolutely made sense plus to hold this support. And if you broke the support and you flushed it down, that would have been even greater to start. And then we had what I lost sight of was SPX, the 385 zone. That was the zone. This was the exact zone we were looking for to see the bounce to start today off of that zone. So much confluence was in the zone. And I lost sight of it in that moment. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll go back and explain why as well. So we got these two wicks in here. Okay, that's a nice pivot here. This eight hour chart. If you look at this on a four hour chart, right? That's our higher low. That's our next support level. What else do we got in here? Let me just clean this up a little bit more. What else do we got in here? We've got the 0.5 off of our low. 0.5 to our top, right? If we're gonna make another leg up, 0.5, that's a great spot to hold to go make another leg up. That's the spot you wanna hold. Uh, you actually don't wanna come down into the golden pocket right now. We're pretty bearish coming into it because we've dropped below the coronavirus crash trend line. Okay, we've dropped below it. So we're pretty bearish and we're seeing some expedited selling pressure right now down to our low. But right now, I know I need to look for where the bounce is going to happen. So I see the 0.5, I see our support, and I'm looking at this move in here, our top to our low, to our lower high. And I, run, and I wanna run an ABC, maybe it's an ABC, maybe it's not, right? Off of our top in here, to that low, to our lower high, to this zone. And I want it to be confluenced with a one-to-one -one extension or a one two seven two, and it was the one-to-one. -one. The one-to-one -one was in this zone. Now, that's a perfect spot. 0.5, one-to-one, -one, support in here. Let's add some more. Our fall-in broadening wedge that caused our original breakout A, B, C, D, E breakout. That trend line, we cannot forget about it because it was our resistance, 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 support. We're looking for this when it gets back tested that it's gonna end up acting as support. Everything was there. Now, in this current pattern that we have right now, this trend line in here, if I look at that from a line chart perspective, our two touches in there, we could be looking for that chart to drop back down into that zone and back test this trend line right in here. Everything was lined up for the bounce to happen in here. Everything was lined up. So let's go back to what we started with this morning, which was the bounce on TNA. Let's close this off in here. So let's go look at the entry on the bounce today on TNA. So we start off looking for the bounce. I start off looking at the bounce. My direction is we're looking for the bounce. So here's the bell. First thing is we go up. I never trust those candlesticks. I don't trust those candlesticks ever. It's generally a fake out, right? Those first couple of candlesticks. Like, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see what a two minute higher low looks like. Let me see what a five minute higher low looks like. So we immediately started going up. I'm watching uh, NAS is bouncing SPX, SPX. Can't remember if I had bounced yet. Uh, NAS is bouncing, um, Russ is bouncing, and I'm looking at individual names. I'm looking like at Tesla, I'm looking at like American Airlines, I'm looking at Boeing, I'm looking at these names, and I'm seeing bounces happen across the board early. So I'm like, okay, but I need to get a confident entry knowing that that low is in. And I got it, and I got it almost perfectly. Here we go, we got a double bottom. Double bottom, reversal, I want to find that signal because I believe we're going up today. And we got it. Boom. Now I want the algo behavior on. In that position right there, when we bounce up, and I got in on the 7711 candle. 7711. Where are we here? Give me one second here. I'm trying to figure out where that was. That, that was we're, we're all the way down in here. Yeah. So I got in the 7711 candle on TNA, which was this candlestick here. Okay, so let's go check out TNA. And this is like a recap 
trade thought process. I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to do ticker request album, but I'll talk about the market. So where was TNA today? That double bottom. 77.11. So yeah, it was right in here. That candlestick right in there. 77.11. Is that the one? 10 a.m.? Yeah, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Let me just double check that that was right because I don't have this prepared. I'm kind of just going through it. So here, Rust double bottom, NAS bull volume coming, and SPX tweezers. Okay, 10 a.m. That was the candlestick. Oh, and just to reiterate here, I uh, took bull index ETFs, TQQQ, and TNA. I took uh, TQQQ on top, but the main one for me was going to be focused on TNA because if TQQQ was just going to melt up, I would just let it ride. But I put a quick stop on that one as well using the EMA here. So now what I wanted to see on the Russell, and you notice I wrote there, SPX tweezers. Uh, so let's look at this here. Right in here, right? We pop up. Now I'm looking for that algo behavior. I'm looking for this behavior. I'm looking for this behavior, not losing the ADMA. But they did it dirty. They did me dirty everybody dirty if you're in that going for it mode and protective mode at the same time which is a horrible uh, horrible way to uh to trade but if you're actually just trying to hit a banger like you're gonna do that right i mean if you're thinking longer bigger picture then you say you know i'm just gonna buy some shares here and i'll let it develop right so what happens is we get the movement exactly what we want i got in on this candlestick in here and we get the movement exactly what we want and then we pause right at the high of the day. We pause right at the high of the day. Now, you know what's in my mind is um, I'm going bull, right? You know what's in my mind? This pause right in here at the high of the day is what happened yesterday, right? We went and made a new high. It got a little bit higher, but we paused and that was it. That was the top. The entire day it sold off afterwards so in my mind when this happened and we paused at that high i know the bigger picture but we could have a black thursday the market could give us one of those big sell days that we haven't actually had in a while so when we get in here and we immediately stall i take it off because i'm like oh i gotta i'm gonna lock this in because that, that doesn't look good to me we should have not lost the two minute five minute adma so what happens is lower high and now we lose to a lower low. So in my mind now, I'm like, oh man, we might do a black. Remember Black Monday, Black Tuesday? Black, we haven't had a Black Thursday, I don't think. Um, so I'm thinking, oh no, they're gonna, they're gonna actually collapse this today, potentially. Because I'm also in the mindset of, I see there's the potential for weakness in the market. So because I see the potential for weakness in the market, I'm kinda got that bias in my head that I can see this doing the big bear day and pushing us down. So immediately they make a new low. I mean, they're going down to make a new low. So now my mindset is going back to where it was yesterday. I was like, okay, that trade didn't happen the way it was planned to happen. The algos aren't responding the same way. And then at that moment, it turned back on and we went up. So I lost sight here. I lost sight on the lower trend line. That's where the real bodies went. You see how the real body never closed below it? When that moment came, it all became evident with the tweezer bottoms on SPX. And SPX tweezer bottom. Um, oh, so that, that actual 10 a.m. candlestick was these tweezer bottoms, okay? That was the tweezer bottoms. And that's what threw me off, right? Because I looked at those tweezers and I was like, it's not a perfect tweezer, it's off by a couple points. And then we went up and we made a new lie, uh, new low, but the tweezers came in here, right there. Man, that was the signal, that was the signal. What time did that happen at, right? 11 o'clock. So at this point, I wasn't in the same mindset. I wasn't in the same uh, frame of mind because I was like, wow, they're really chopping this around. The algos are not responding correctly. And this tells me there's a lot happening under the hood in here. A lot happening beneath the waterline, which is making this a little bit more difficult to catch that trend. 
Now I still got my eyes on it and I see these uh, tweezer bottoms in here and let's go look at that. Um, this is a significant bear break on the NASDAQ too. That got, that got in my head, that 12.7, 12, 12, right? The 12.700, and I'll go talk about that. I'm just looking for my train of thought this morning. As you can tell, this is not a planned video. 11.31, I posted SPX bounce from exactly where we discussed this morning. So that was at 11, I noticed here on that candlestick. So I posted at 11.30, uh, SBX bounce from exactly where we discussed this morning. I posted at 11.30, and that was on this candlestick that I recognized it, right? And immediately you could tell, like if I were to look at it at that time, I say, well, there's a shooting star candlestick in here. Nothing looks great. You can see what happened now. Let's go look at the five minute chart. Like that's choppy. Okay, in here it got a little bit better, but look what happened, right? Then we started to fade, and then at the end of the day, they ramped it all the way back up and they turned the algos on. So two days, two amazing setups that got huge follow through caused massive frustration for me because of how they did it. They made it, they popped it up, made a new low, chopped it around and then ran it at the end of the day. That's on the SPX, the Russell, two days in a row, same scenario, popped, dropped it, then ran it here first they popped Sorry, dumped it, popped, then dumped it. So that day, I was looking for this move. I caught like 40 cents off of it. This day, looking for this move, I caught a dollar. I think I caught a dollar 30 or something. Woohoo! Um, what did TNA do in the end of the day? It bounced from 75 to 85. So the idea would be that you know, you can be a little bit more agile and more flexible, but I'm not that type of over trader, right? I'm not going to go in and try and trade, oh, this five minute candlestick, this five minute candlestick. I want something very solid. And then by the time this happened in here, it started to look a little bit more intriguing on this candlestick because we've got a five minute higher low. We've got a five minute higher low. Now in here, we paused. I looked at this zone. Maybe that's going to come in now, act as a resistance, and we started to fade. Uh, and then at the end of the day, they ramped it up. So if you're feeling frustrated, if you're having uh, a messy time in the market, I hear you, that, that, this is frustrating. These, this, these past two trades, extremely frustrating because that trade is there. That is a big trade. That's a $10 bounce on TNA. Yesterday's drop is a, um, yesterday, now I'm losing sight of where yesterday's candlestick was. Yeah, this one. That is a $15 drop. Now, you're not going to get the full thing, but there's a big portion to extract out of there. And I got fractions. So it goes back to um, where you are. Where you are. Where is your higher low? How protective are you getting? How much size are you trying to go in this trade? If, if I have a trending market, then I'm not going to be tight like this, right? I'm going to have the proper position. I'm going to let it develop. But we don't have a trending market. What do we have in here? Let's let's go through each of the indexes. So by the way, that's the end of the rant trade re trade reflection. Um, what do we have in here? There's no trend in this market right now in the Russ. So we look at the Russ. Um, we have big move up, big move down, big move up, big move down. That is a trade a swing trader's nightmare, right? Because in here, it's short-term trade, right? You're like, oh, bullish reversal hammer, and then it starts to go, and now you're like, well, we got this resistance in here, we got resistance in here, we got resistance in here, and you'd wanna get into a swing trade, and now by the time you go to a blue sky, you're like, oh, I gotta get in swing trades right now, I missed the bottom, and then that marks the top, right? Then you're caught chasing, which is something I don't like to do and never do. I don't chase it. Like, I need to find something solid. And look what happens, we come all the way back down. So you get a bull trap in here. This is a bull trap. This is a new all time high bull trap, right? And then what happens is we come down into this level and you're looking for the bounce. Uh, you wanna catch it, but right now, what happens tomorrow? You got a bullish reversal hammer candlestick now off of the zone. What happened last time we did that? We ran, now tomorrow. That's what I wanna see. Can we get the fall through continuation? But there, you could get into a trade tomorrow, you could let it develop, and you could look for the continuation. But as of right now, it's not a trending market. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. 
So, swing traders nightmare. Let's go check out. Now the Dow is very different. The Dow is kind of just ro like the rotation, whatever is happening, is still been extremely bullish for the Dow. So if you're looking at BA right now, and you're thinking, I need to be in BA, yeah, it's a good trade to be in, right? It's a good trade to be in. My focus wasn't there today because my focus was trying to catch this rust situation. But BA, you look at this candlestick, so you say bullish reversal hammer within a couple points of all time high, this is a good setup. Now, a new all time high is gonna create some bearish divergence, so it's likely going to be a sell once we get there. So how strong is the trend in here? Well, we popped up, we dropped, we popped. Now, you know, it's still looking pretty good. It does have the best trend. We know the NAS does not. The NAS is a mess. And that's where the rotation is happening. And the struggle with reading the market is because the NAS has such a massive weight on the market. A massive weight. It's the biggest weight. So we know if sell algos are on, on the NASDAQ, we look lower. In, across the board, a lot of it's gonna follow, but if it starts to just trade sideways and doesn't get into massive sell uh, panic fear candles, then you know everyone can just do their own thing. But I was looking at this zone and it became uh, very, very biased that when this zone breaks, we're gonna look lower. And I still feel that way, but I am going to admit I'm pretty biased on that, that I do believe this is a breakdown now. Support, support uh, needed to hold. That's where we ran up. That's where we defended. And we came all the way back down to the zone and we broke it. So from here, I'm thinking NAS is gonna drop down. So anything in terms of a bounce back up should be a short entry. I could be absolutely wrong about that because we did bounce off of the GP. Now we should, this one should have been a little bit stronger, should have held the 0.5 if, if you were reading the chart from a certain perspective, we should have held that point. But look where the wick came right at the GP. If I turn a log chart on, what does it do? It's just above it. So right from that point. So now we're looking for a lower high. And in my opinion, the lower high is likely going to be a short. I do think we have to revisit this zone again and test within the GP. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for. So my mindset now is really conflicted because I look at the Dow, bullish. I look at the Russ, bullish reversal hammer. That looks like it could see some good continuation tomorrow. And I look at NAS and I say, guys, this is just an indecision day on something that started to push back down. Indecision, this is not strength. We lost our support here as well. I do think we're at least going to revisit that zone. But that created a bias in here when we lost the zone that I thought we would see a stronger move, uh, not just to the GP, in the GP, and we fell just short. And it happened because SPX decided to bounce from that zone. Right, perfectly. So here's what I'm gonna end the video with now, is that looking into this tomorrow, what should we expect? Tomorrow's a big day. I believe it's a big day. Um, today's candlestick is confirmation. Bulls are gonna ramp this right back up. And we're gonna go back to the top trend line, which would give us a back test of that potential weekly rising wedge that we have, right? And if you notice right now, because of today's bounce, where we are in terms of the lower trend line from the corona crash is that we're back within it. So the weekly chart, again, would hold that zone. And that's what today's candlestick did. So now going into tomorrow, let's zoom in to get this a little bit mess, uh, less messy. We know the bounce came in here. What we're watching for is we didn't reject the GP. That was a really good sign on this bounce. Now we're watching for is can the line chart close over this trend line and actually it did i didn't realize that oh it's doing it after hours it's moving a little bit after hours so in the only other perspective in here with that top line is that maybe we have to go to the wicks right maybe we have to go to the wicks and we'll see that reaction in there this is a bullish engulfing candlestick on the eight hour chart it is a bullish reversal hammer on the daily chart if you're bearish you don't want to see this candlestick right now you don't want to see this pivot off of this zone I'm going to assume the upside continuation, test that 394, test that zone, right? And then if we break, we're gonna go make a new all-time high, which again will likely be bearish divergence and a sell opportunity. But if we get continuation tomorrow in SPX, in the Russ, my instinct there is to play it. 
to go bull with it and see if we could get a melt up continuation and have a bear trap. If I see a pause and I see a signal, I do want to get into the bearish because I look at the NASDAQ and I say, the NASDAQ looks like it's going lower. So we're in a conflicting environment. We don't have anything in sync. There are moments during the day where items are getting in sync. Algos are selling at the same time. Algos are buying at the same time. That's what we saw at the end of the day. We want to see that for a lengthy period of time. We don't want to see it for two hours, three hours. We want to see it for a couple of days and get that nice trend. Let's be aware that might happen right now. SBX, Russ, showing us bullish reversal hammers, that Dow is strong, that we could push up. If the NAS gets in line and it goes with them, we could push up. But I, re I remind everybody to be agile in case this is a fake up because we have to be open-minded for that. And let's just quickly wrap it up and talk about BTC because I know I have a lot of people focused on BTC right now. Uh, the fact that we broke that zone is a red flag for me. But of course, whenever you break a zone in a chart, guys, don't think it's just automatically that's it, game over. The manner in which you break a zone, and I talked about this on Afternoon Live today, the manner in which you break a zone. So if this is your support zone and you're hanging around near it, and you know the bears are weakening that, weakening that zone, when it breaks, it should get a good follow through. Just like when the bulls are trying to break up to the upside, right? Bulls are trying to break up to the upside, they weaken that zone, doesn't matter the price, it's the entire zone, boom, you get follow through. Generally later, you'll come back and back test it and look to make it a support. So when you have a support level like this, which is that golden pocket range, which is this key zone that was acting as resistance, if you come through it and you come through it aggressively like that, and you didn't weaken the zone, you could absolutely just get an oversold uh, bounce reaction. And then eventually, slowly, it, cr it trickles back down over there under it. So that's what I'd be looking at right now on BTC is that this came too aggressively down. Look at this. It's a sharp move. So of course, it's going to bounce right back up over it. So now we got to see what's going to happen from here. As you can see, some upper wicks forming, and you can see an even greater bounce, right? A continuation bounce. Bulls get an hourly trend change, right? Maybe they get an hourly trend change. Inverse head and shoulders shaped up. You could do something along those lines. But ultimately, I believe this chart now is going to see some lower prices. And those lower prices I'd be looking at, and of course, we'll have to adjust as things go, as things move on. But I do believe 49336 should be visited, and if not, uh, and if even more extreme, down to the 4652. We broke down, we're in a downtrend. Bulls got to change the four hour trend. As of right now, you're coming from an oversold condition. Okay, so the four hour RSI was down at 28. The hourly RSI was down at 23. You're coming from a four hour hourly oversold condition. This new low in here and needed to correct because you had bullish divergence on that correction right in there. I mean, sorry, you had bullish divergence on the new low, which needed a correction. So now you got this zone. This zone was acting as your support. As you get back into that range, you want to see now, is it resistance or can the bulls get the trend change in here and break back up over the zone? So that, that's my review for today. Um, as you can tell, I got some frustration in me because of those two juicy setups. And, I'm, and I want to deliver that juicy setup to the community as well, right? There was two opportunities there. We could have got a lot of fall through. But don't be discouraged. I'm never discouraged. I'm going to be ready to get back on the horse and look for another great opportunity as they come. And they will come. We know this. The market would trend again. There will be bigger ranges that develop again. Uh, today's bounce, um, you know, we've lost a lot of that range already. Unless you unless you crushed it, then good for you. Congratulations. Very proud. I want people to crush it. That's the end goal. Um, but we've lost a lot of that range now. $10 bounce, right? On TNA and some of the other ones. So we move on. We move forward. Oh, by the way, there's bearish divergence in here on the... And that's why it's correcting in here. We move on. We move forward. Um, I'm going to go have lunch. I mean, dinner with Sherv tonight. Talk about some things. And we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out where the next big trade is. I hope you enjoyed the recap. N nonetheless, every time we make a mistake in the market, every time we miss something and we don't respond to it, we don't act on it, we look at ourselves and we say, what could I have done differently? 
and that's what I was showing with you. Like I needed to do a couple of things differently and look at it from a different perspective. And my biggest thing, my biggest learning coming out of this is the way the market conditioned me to watch how the algos were behavior, behaving, that shifted on, on me right now. That, that has shifted. So something shifted in the market. There's behavior change in the market. So I need to recognize that tomorrow, the next day, moving forward until it shifts again. When things aren't working the way they were, it's because something has shifted in the market. And the sooner you recognize something has shifted in the market, the better trader you're going to be. Peace out, everybody.